Next up in our series of historic Route 66 tours is the section from Ludlow to Needles. Similar to the previous one between Barstow and Ludlow, this segment is even more remote and is also twice as long. This stretch of Route 66 is part of the once dreaded Barstow to Needles portion of the road that was so intimidating to those traveling back in the 20s and 30s. Most people had never seen a desert before and the lack of civilization out there was a genuine worry. One interesting aspect to this segment of Route 66 is that it was one of the last two long stretches of the old road that was used until Interstate 40 opened in 1973. Looking at this pre-1970s USGS topo map, notice how I-40 doesn't extend far past either Ludlow or the other end. These mountains here posed a challenge for I-40's construction, but look at how much distance it cut off compared to Route 66, which followed a mountainless path to the south along the railroad tracks. Unlike the previous segment where I-40 is present most of the way, you won't see Route 66's successor for most of this tour. Personally, I remember riding in the back seat of the family car along this dreaded segment in the early 1970s. Imagine this road being so busy and choked full of trucks that cars couldn't pass, creating long lines of traffic. We often avoided this by taking a detour through the towns of Searchlight and Nipton to reach I-15, which had been a freeway since the 1960s. On the previous tour, I told you about the large number of bridges on Route 66 in the desert. This segment has the highest concentration of bridges of all. I'll discuss a little more about these bridges not covered in the other tours. I'll also frequently refer to this map from 1912 that shows Route 66's predecessor, National Old Trails Road. It stretches from Daggett to Needles. It points out all of the washes the road had to cross, which were later spanned by all those bridges. These maps, created by the Automobile Club of Southern California starting around 1910, were used for promoting the use of a new invention called the automobile, as well as travel access to Southern California. As you can see, the maps illustrate a lot of detail so that motorists would know what they would encounter on these troublesome desert roads. Just like our other tours, I'll use Google Earth to show our route as well as the topography and landscapes will pass along the way. One more thing to notice when traveling this segment of Old Route 66. If you travel it from Victorville all the way to Ludlow, you will have passed by towns and places where people live today. They are here because they're closer to populated areas or near the two interstates. The ghost towns and sites we'll see in this segment used to be teeming with people too. People needed to work on the railroad back then. There was mining going on. Plus people were traveling this then major thoroughfare known as Route 66. Today, that isn't so. The railroad needs little maintenance now. The mining panned out. And I-40 is the new major thoroughfare. Since these old towns were no longer close to any population center or a heavily traveled interstate, the people moved away and the towns simply evaporated. Now that you have some background, let me give you a summary of our tour. It starts where we left off on the last tour in the desert outpost town of Ludlow. We'll take a look around town and then head east. After leaving Ludlow for the next 26 miles, there will be no signs of civilization, which is the longest stretch of remoteness in this entire tour. In that stretch, we'll pass by two towns that have been erased from the Earth's surface, Siberia and Baghdad. 
We'll see Amboy Crater in the far distance and later when we arrive, make a little visit to this interesting and pristine piece of geology. Right after that, we'll visit the resurrected, popular Route 66 town, Amboy. Continuing east, we'll drive past miles of roadside rock art that began in the 1940s and spawned a desert tradition. Next, we'll pass by the remains of an old truck stop with a well-preserved sign that is now a Route 66 attraction. After that, we'll roll through the town of Chambliss and then climb up to Cadiz Summit. We'll then pass through more wide open viewscapes of desert called Fenner Valley, where, again, we'll see few signs of human development. We'll also encounter this lone kiosk. Finally, we'll reach the town of Essex and take a close look at some of its old buildings and discuss Mitchell Caverns. We'll then pass by a bridge that was built in the 1950s, so Route 66 could go over the railroad tracks and onto a newer road alignment. Then, soon after that, we'll pass underneath I-40. The next town on our list is Goffs, with its historic schoolhouse and museum. Route 66 then meets up with US-95 as it heads back to I-40. We'll make a quick stop at Camp Ibis. Before ending our tour, we're 66 and 95 empty onto I-40 for the final stretch in the Needles. We'll stop in and look at another forgotten town called Kleinfelter. Most of this segment of Route 66 is now protected inside these borders of the newly created Mojave Trails National Monument which helps to provide money to repair the many bridges and preserve the old sites, as well as provide public interpretation of this region, such as this video tour. All right, let's get going on our tour, starting at Ludlow. We'll start our journey by exiting I-40 at Ludlow. The town is on the south side of the freeway. We cover a lot of Ludlow's history in our accompanying tour of the Mojave Trails National Monument. Be sure to watch that video to learn more about Ludlow. Most of Ludlow today is owned by one person. That person owns all the businesses that are currently operating in Ludlow. Most of the abandoned buildings sit on property that is also owned by that same person. If you cross Route 66 and drive south of the businesses, you'll be on Main Street. This was the small downtown section of Ludlow. This mercantile store is the last commercial building still standing from Ludlow's heyday. Now, get back to the stop sign and start heading east, like we are doing now. Reset your trip meter here. We'll soon pass by some abandoned buildings, including this old gas station and this building on the right, which was the Ludlow Motel that had a series of cabins next to it. This will be the last signs of civilization until we reach Amboy in 28 miles. And that's Ludlow. In two and a half miles, we'll cross the railroad tracks and civilization will be in our rearview mirror. About six miles past the railroad crossing, the road begins a long, gradual descent that ends almost in Amboy. For the railroad, this summit is where there was a wide track used to turn around helper locomotives that helped trains up this long hill. Here were the old railroad establishments of Ash Hill and Klondike. Near Klondike, the road passes over a large wash that drains a considerable expanse of desert into the valley we'll soon be driving through. Here you can see the age of this old wooden bridge that has been sitting in the desert sun for over a hundred years. As mentioned in our previous Route 66 tours, there are more bridges between Daggett and the Arizona border than all the other bridges combined on the entire historic alignment of Route 66. 
Looking at the old map from 1912, you'll see that between Siberia and Amboy, the words numerous crosswashes is labeled on the map. When the road was upgraded in 1926 and renamed Route 66, many bridges were built to span all of these washes. Today, many of those bridges have aged considerably. Starting around 2020, these old bridges are slowly being repaired as seen with this newly upgraded bridge. At 13.3 miles from Ludlow, a dirt road to the left leads to the remains of Siberia. This was an important water stop for steam engines climbing the long grade between Amboy and Ash Hill. All that remains of Siberia is the foundation and a few walls of a gas station. Incidentally, next to the gas station is this trace of an older alignment of Route 66 and its predecessor. If you look at aerial imagery at many places along this tour, you can see where the original alignment sometimes strayed from where we drive today. At 20.4 miles from Ludlow, we'll see another dirt road to the left, this one leading to where Baghdad used to be. Unlike Siberia, where there is one foundation left, there is nothing left of Baghdad. In its beginnings, Baghdad had more going for itself. Here you see an old station house used along the railroad. And here's a picture of the original Baghdad Cafe, not related to the one in Newberry Springs. You can see Amboy Crater in the distance. Several nearby mines also helped Baghdad's economy. Across the road from Baghdad is this memorial. Nearby here was the Baghdad Auxiliary Airfield, which was part of a network of emergency landing strips built in the 1930s. On April 9, 1942, just after the attack on Pearl Harbor, five aviators lost their lives here during a landing attempt at night. They were training to fight in the looming air war. Nearby the memorial are these grave sites. We're not sure if they are related to this event or not. The Baghdad Cemetery is on the other side of the railroad tracks, as seen on this topo map. Up ahead is our next stop, Amboy Crater, as seen here from Baghdad. The next point of interest after Baghdad is Amboy Crater. For many miles, this geologic feature is visible along Route 66, both eastbound like we're doing, as well as westbound. This odd sight probably made this long, boring segment of highway a little more interesting to its weary travelers. Amboy Crater is a cinder cone, which is basically a mini volcano. Cinder cones usually erupt a few times and then stop whereas volcanoes, like Mount St. Helens, erupt over and over again and become very big and tall. During its eruptions, it created this large area of basalt, which is dried lava. As you can see, it spread out over a large area. Amboy Crater is unique as it hasn't been mined or disturbed by man, unlike many other cinder cones in the Mojave Desert. According to geologists, Amboy Crater last erupted about 10,000 years ago. If you take in the three-mile round-trip hike to the top of the cone, you'll see the rings of the different eruptions. Visit Amboy Crater by turning off Route 66 here. The access road and parking lot are all paved. The trailhead to hike Amboy Crater, along with a picnic area and restrooms, are found at the end of the parking lot. There's also an observation deck that sits on a higher ridge overlooking the cinder cone with an easy walkway for those who don't care to take in the longer hike. From the observation deck, not far in the distance, you can see our next point of interest, the town of Amboy. On the original Route 66 alignment, Amboy is roughly the halfway point between Barstow and Needles, or 28 miles from Ludlow. So it was a convenient place to have a rest stop and hotel for travelers along this stretch of 66. 
Amboy was founded as a mining town in 1858 and is one of California's oldest towns. Amboy once boasted a hefty population of about 700. Twenty years ago, the town seemed deserted. Today, however, the town and its businesses seem alive, thanks to its owner that purchased the town back in 2014. Often, the cafe is open, and they even sell fuel from these old gas pumps. One interesting fact about the naming of Amboy and the remaining towns we'll see for the rest of the tour. The railroad named them in alphabetical sequence, starting with A for Amboy. The next town, which we won't see, is Bengal. Then there's C for Cadiz. Then D for Danby. E for Essex. F for Fenner. G for Goffs, and so on. Originally, these were all water stops that steam locomotives relied on, and I'm sure the alphabetical naming helped the engineers know where they were in their long desert and featureless trek. Between Amboy and the next town, which is Chambliss, you'll begin to see some interesting roadside rock art, or graffiti if you prefer, on the north or left side of the road. This art will go on for several miles. The tradition of this rock art supposedly began when a family car broke down near here in the 1940s. While the parents were working on the car or getting help, the kids spent their time writing their names on the berm used to protect the roadbed from flash floods that would flow out of the mountains to the north. What those kids started, originally with just rocks, morphed into other objects like painted rocks, colored glass, tires, women's bonnets, books, and other items to create what we now call roadside rock art. It was an interesting phenomenon that started here and began to appear along other sections of Route 66. About 37.5 miles from Ludlow, you'll see the ruins of this old truck stop and restaurant on the right. This is home of the now famous Roadrunner's Retreat sign. The Roadrunner's Retreat opened for business in 1962. It consisted of a restaurant and a standard oil service station, now known as Chevron. You can still faintly see the Chevron blue paint on the gas station. Unfortunately, the restaurant burned down in 2020. The pictures you are seeing are from 2014, before it burned, and then in 2023. There is a group of people that are working on restoring this property and lighting up the sign. A mile and a half down the road, we'll pass through the town of Chambliss, also known as Cadiz or Cadiz Junction. The junction is actually of two major railroad lines, the Santa Fe that we've been seeing all along, and a main line that goes to Phoenix, Arizona, operated by the Arizona and California Railway. As explained earlier, the railroad named Cadiz, which starts with the letter C. By coincidence, the town on Route 66, Chambliss, also starts with a C. Notice how the 1912 map only shows Cadiz, whereas newer maps show both. Chambliss is named after James and Fanny Chambliss, who opened this gas station and store in the early 1900s, then moved it to the new Route 66 alignment in 1930, and is the building you see today. This is how it looked in its heyday. Over the years, the gas station here changed brands several times, including Red Crown, Mobile, Shell, and finally Arco. After I-40 was completed, the store here lingered on because of traffic from San Diego and Palm Springs, but eventually closed in the early 1980s. On Cadiz Road, behind the remains of the store, are a bunch of cabins that were part of the business. Incidentally, Cadiz Road, which is dirt, continues for almost 50 miles to the southeast through Cadiz Valley, a huge remote desert region. When we visited Chambliss in April 2023, Route 66 was closed at Chambliss due to damaged bridges. If you plan your Route 66 trip anytime before 2025, you may run into road closures like this, 
but the detours are typically easy. After heading east from Chambliss, the road climbs up and over Cadiz Summit. At the summit, you'll find the burnt remains of the cafe and gas station of the same name, Cadiz Summit. Since the ascent to Cadiz Summit is a little steeper than other gradients along desert segments of Route 66, older vehicles of the day had difficulties conquering it in the desert heat. Countless vehicles were repaired here or had to recover from an overheated radiator. In its heyday, this little spot was a hub of activity in the 40s and 50s. The owner was well liked as he helped and traded with many of the locals. After crossing Cadiz Summit, we'll travel another long stretch of open desert called Fenner Valley. Just over two miles from Cadiz Summit, you'll see this pullout with a kiosk on the right, overlooking the vast desert viewscapes where the only signs of human development might be a passing train. The signs explain various aspects of historic Route 66. We were part of a tour organized by San Bernardino County that educated people involved with the preservation of the old road in this forgotten corner of the county. About 17 miles past Cadiz Summit, or about 60 miles from Ludlow, we reach the town of Essex. Here you'll find some more interesting ruins of old buildings from a vanished time. This old post office is still open, but only for the locals to get to their P.O. boxes. Next to the post office are the remains of the wayside garage, cafe, store, and camp. This is the way it looked in 1932, and this is how it looked in 2023. Behind the wayside cafe are several remains of buildings and businesses that used to thrive here along busy Route 66 before 1970. There's also some nice artifacts to see here, but just remember they are on private property. Essex was known for having free water, which was a valuable commodity. Water was fetched from a classic well near the road. On March 25, 1977, all the residents of Essex at the time, about 50 in total, got their five minutes of fame by all being on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. Essex had no TV reception, and in order to get reception, thousands of dollars needed to be spent on installing a device called a translator. Johnny found it interesting that such a town existed, so he invited them all to Burbank to be on the show. After the airing, a company decided to install a translator at no charge so that Essex residents could finally watch TV. Rather than me telling the entire story, hear it from Johnny himself by using the link above or in the comments to watch this snippet of The Tonight Show. During the Route 66 era, Essex was the gateway to Mitchell Caverns, which are spectacular limestone caves that have been fascinating travelers along the Mother Road for decades. Jack Mitchell began giving tours of the caverns located on his property about 22 miles northwest of Essex in the early 1930s. The caverns are now a state park that is encapsulated by the Mojave National Preserve. See our video tour of the preserve to learn more. Continuing on Route 66, in less than two miles from Essex, a fork in the road is reached. Bearing right takes you on a bridge that crosses the railroad tracks and beelines it to I-40 in Needles. This was a realignment of Route 66 that was created in 1930, resulting in a shorter route. It has been closed since 2021 due to more bridge washouts and, since the road is rarely used, there's probably no rush in repairing it. Bearing left is the way we'll go in this tour. It follows the railroad and the alignment of the original National Old Trails Road in the 1926 to 1930 rendition of Route 66. On maps, this segment of Historic 66 is called Goff's Road. Route 66 passes under I-40 in about five miles and passes by the town of Fenner. All that remains of Fenner in 2023 
is a modern Chevron gas station and the remains of a few old roadside businesses. Just like the other towns we've passed since Siberia, Fenner was another water stop on the railroad. With the increase of traffic when National Old Trails Road opened, a gas station was built in 1912. When Route 66 was realigned in 1930, as we learned earlier, Fenner went into decline and many people moved to Essex, which remained on Route 66. Continuing on 66 for about 10 miles leads us to Goffs. This is another town that suffered from the 1930 realignment. The main attraction now in Goffs is the historic Goffs Schoolhouse, which was resurrected and is now operated by the Mojave Desert Heritage and Cultural Association. The schoolhouse serves as a museum of desert artifacts and is usually open Friday through Sunday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. As the pictures show, it's well worth the visit. After crossing the railroad tracks, there used to be several businesses located on the left side of the road. This is a view of driving Route 66 going the other direction to give you an idea of what Goffs looks like when you approach it. All the land you see to the north of Goffs is in the Mojave National Preserve. The land of the south, or on the left, is in the Mojave Trails National Monument. As mentioned, Look for our separate video tours on both places. From here, we'll continue heading east until Route 66 tees into US 95. Turn right on a US 95. From this point until we hit I-40, US 66 and 95 share the same alignment. If you'd like to take a quick side trip, Turning left will take you to historic Camp Ibis in two miles. This is where thousands of troops were trained for battle by General George S. Patton in World War II. Camp Ibis is marked by this historic marker. Other than the many roads that crisscross this area, nothing else remains of what was once a bustling military encampment. After turning right onto US-95 from the T, in a few miles, the remains of another town called Kleinfelter can be seen. Unlike all the other towns you've seen in this tour, this one is different because of all the palm trees. Naturally, the palm trees are a sign of water, in this case, a spring. Along with the palm trees, the primary landmark in Kleinfelter is this honey stand. It has been selling honey here for many decades. And, less than two miles from Kleinfelter, 66 and 95 funnel on to I-40, where you can simply drive into Needles using the modern highway. However, just before reaching I-40, if you turn left onto a dirt road, you can check out the old road alignment that existed before I-40 was built. From here to Needles, however, I-40 was built on top of the old alignment, so there's nothing historical to see. And that's the end of our tour. We'll zoom out now using Google Earth and look back at our entire tour route from Ludlow to just outside of Needles. As always, find our neighboring tours of Route 66 by either visiting our YouTube channel or our travel blog at backroadswest.com, then browse tours by Route 66. This video tour was made possible by Newberry Springs Chamber of Commerce with funding from San Bernardino County Tourism. The video was produced by the Backroad Touring Experts at backroadswest.com. Thanks for watching our tour of Route 66 from Ludlow to Needles. Next up is our series of tours of Route 66 that crosses the state of Arizona which will be completed around late 2023 or early 2024. Plus, there's plenty of history in Needles itself, which is a video we will make in the future. Until then, we bid you happy exploring.